Hey guys, it's Khalil. So today's video is about an N64 I bought on eBay, and the description basically just said that there was some liquid damage. And so I bought it, not knowing what the extent of the damage was, knowing that it wouldn't work when I got it because there were no cords and no jumper pack, and I wanted to see if I could fix it. So let's jump in. All right, so I just got an N64 I've been waiting for for a while that came without. $50 worth of bubble wrap, so it's in good protected condition, but it was stated that it might not work, and it's really dirty. So, just gotta make sure it works, and clean it. I'm gonna take it apart clean it first, and then I might clean the controller. It's kind of dirty. Joystick's fine, though. So I'll get this all cleaned up first, then I'll plug in the joystick, or plug in the controller and see how that goes. I'm going to use my little tool that I got off of eBay for $3. Take out the special screws. There's three along the top, three along the bottom, and there's a million videos on how to take these apart. So I don't think I need to go into too much detail. So normally to take these apart, you need to take out the expansion pack, but it's already out, didn't come with one. So it's in good condition, not dirty or anything. This door's a little bit dirty, and up inside there too, so we're just going to take everything all apart. Whatever's in it, it's definitely sticky. I didn't break any of those, those are all good. Wow. Might have some electrical issues because that looks like they just spilled pop all over. Well, first we're going to disassemble everything, so I'll just set this off to the side. Man, even the bottom's sticky. These ones you gotta make sure you get a tiny small screwdriver for them that fits them. Because when I first started, I used a bigger screwdriver and stripped plenty of them out. I've learned my lesson. There we go. Yeah. Smells like Dr. Pepper. So now we know what they poured all over. Off to the side, let's flip this over. Looks like we got some right there. Definitely looks like it's completely fine though. It doesn't look like there's any shorts or anything. Not visible. I'd be kind of worried about this part though. It's not sticky, but that's definitely where it came in at. Alright. Well, I guess next step is to clean it. Alright, so I've got some Clorox wipes, which for electronics, probably not the best, but I'm okay to mess up a little bit. No. Give that just good. A little bit of scrub to get rid of the dirt and a little bit that did spill this way. Try to avoid the electronics, but it's old 90s stuff, so it's pretty durable.
Alright, so I went and turned off the camera because I didn't think anyone would watch me scrub this for like 40 minutes. So that's all now nice and clean and not sticky anywhere. If I find another place before I put it back together, I will clean it, but it's good. A little bit of stretched plastic there. I don't know what caused that, but it's by the battery port. No one will ever see that. So next is this. Pop out these buttons first, or button and switch rather. That's actually really interesting because I've only seen green consoles with green game, I don't know, what's that called? Game cartridge holder, whatever. I've never seen one with a clear one, so that's pretty new to me. We have those out. I'm gonna take this out just with a regular screwdriver, Phillips head. Tape it. Spit that out. I'll take these plates out to clean these two. So first, I'm just gonna clean this. I'll do it briefly and I'll get into the nitty gritty nitty-gritty details off-camera because again I don't think you want to watch that and if you're region unlocking these all you have to do is take off those tabs and they're actually here and here on the Japanese versions and then you can play Japanese and US games and that's all there is to it and for that I usually use a Dremel though I started off using a pocket knife and cut myself a few times so I don't recommend that route And then a trick to get in the corners, I like to get a tiny little screwdriver, flathead of course, just kind of rub it back and forth, make sure you have enough padding that you don't scratch anything accidentally. And for plastic I like to go back until it catches and then thread it in. That way you don't risk stripping it out. So I've sped you back to the future again, and I've got everything cleaned up as nice as it possibly will go. Right now, I'm just going to put that all together. It looks really nice. Put it off to the side. Bring out the main mess. But underneath was coated with Dr. Pepper. I cleaned that all up and put it back together. Here we are now. So, I believe the next step is putting it all back together. Alright, so everything is now finally together. Looks amazing. No damage or anything anywhere that I've been able to tell. So, now it's time to test and make sure that the controller works. I'm gonna play in my favorite controller testing game, and let's hook it up to the TV. Alright, so I have my testing game in, I have the controller hooked up, I have the system hooked up. systems working. Let's start a game and see if all the controllers work.
Stick's actually pretty tight. That's good. That works. Joystick moves all the way around. Z works. L works. All the C buttons work. B works. And A works. So we have a working controller. Start works. Alright. I'm sure this video probably turned out a lot longer than I meant it to. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, one of my friends told me I should tell you to like and subscribe, even though I only have one subscriber and he's the one that told me to tell you that. So, like, subscribe, and tell me what you want to see next if you like this kind of thing. Otherwise, I'm just going to post my own thing and hope someone likes it. Thanks for watching. See you later.